Hey there, marketing researchers and Excel users. In this video series, we're going to learn about summarizing, describing, and displaying data using Excel, particularly for bivariate analysis using pivot tables and pivot charts. In these slides, we're going to learn about basic bivariate summarization and describing of our data set. These slides still don't cover statistical testing yet. I will be getting to those quite shortly. As always, we're using our craft beer practice data set that you should have readily available to you. And when we talk about the idea of bivariate analysis, it, this is where sort of the bread and butter of really meaningful um, analysis of marketing research questions really begins. Bivariate analysis just means that we're analyzing or comparing two variables together simultaneously. As an example, consider the question, do people who live in San Diego County tend to spend more money on craft beer? And people who do not live in San Diego County. This is an example that would require bivariate analysis. We need to know the location of where somebody lives and we need to know their spending on craft beer. Or consider the following. Are people more familiar with San Diego local craft breweries or nationally distributed craft breweries? One of the variables that we would need is someone's familiarity level with local San Diego craft breweries. And we'd also need to know the familiarity level with non-San Diego nationally distributed craft breweries. As a third and final example, is there a correlation with someone's subjective knowledge about craft beer and their willingness to spend money on craft beer? In other words, if people think they know more about craft beer, do they tend to also be the kind of people who are willing to spend more? Or perhaps they're the kind of people who are willing to spend less because they think they know more about the beer and are good value shoppers. To investigate this, we would need to know someone's subjective knowledge about craft beer and we would also need to know information about people's willingness to spend money on craft beer. Now, there's a variety of different ways to conduct bivariate analysis. This video is not exhaustive in that means. However, pivot tables and charts can be a very useful, versatile tool to conduct this type of basic exploration. Pivot tables are commonly used in marketing analysis. Uh, it's a, a very powerful way to group, summarize, report, and explore your data set. And while it's a very powerful tool for bivariate analysis, it can also be plenty useful for simple univariate analysis or for the analysis of more than two variables simultaneously. Our focus here will just be looking at two variables at a time, though. I should also mention the idea of a pivot table is not unique to Excel. The principles that underlie the use of pivot tables in Excel exist in a wide variety of different analysis uh, software packages and cloud-based platforms. So let's learn about the use of pivot tables by way of a simple prompt. Our question is going to be, I wonder if people who have been to a craft beer tasting room are more prone to prefer really hoppy beers. Now luckily, in our data set, we already have two variables that are going to allow us to investigate this question. We have a question that asks people about whether or not they have visited a tasting room of a San Diego brewery. And not only does it tell us if they have done it, but whether or not, if they haven't, if they'd like to do it or not. In addition, we also have a Likert scale question with an I don't know option to the uh, sta a statement, I like my beer to be extremely hoppy. We can clearly use these two variables to investigate this question. Now we're going to be hopping back and forth between Microsoft Excel and these sort of analysis game plan slides as we move through our pivot table analysis. So be ready to hop back and forth uh, through your Excel if you're following along. So our cross tabulation here is going to allow us to compare these two variables. So when we make our cross tab, we know that one of our variables is going to be if they visited a tasting room and our other variable is going to be opinions about hoppy beer. And then we're going to need to report some sort of statistical values that are most appropriate for our research question inside the cross tab. Should it be a count, the overall percentage, the row percentage, the column percentage? Uh, for now, we're just going to keep in mind that picking the right statistic inside of our cross tab is going to be essential, but we'll settle on that right choice when we're actually designing the pivot table in Excel. Just keep that floating in the back of your head though. Now to set up a pivot table in Excel, we have to do the following. First, it's going to be easiest for us if we use the labels tab on our data set. So make sure you're working from there. Clicking in cell A1, the upper left-hand corner of our data set, we're going to go to insert pivot table, and by default, Excel will guess that we want to build the pivot table from the entire whole data set. So we're identifying what we want to use, make sure it's confirmed and works well, and then we'll simply click OK. And we will now show this in Excel.
Now that our pivot table tab has been popped open and we're ready to build our pivot table, we will see this uh, sort of interface in the Excel spreadsheet itself where we're going to build out our pivot table. It'll dynamically update as we adjust the settings. And if it's not showing for you, make sure that the Analyze tab of the Pivot Table Tools is showing and the Field List button is available. What you want to make sure that you're seeing on the right-hand side of your Excel spreadsheet is the Pivot Table Fields menu. That's the Field List icon above. Uh, sometimes it's sort of hidden for some users, but you can pop it open. Um, but it'll be there, and it might be slightly rearranged differently, but all the things that uh, we're, we're seeing here will be available to you. The upper half of this includes all of our variables. Each checkbox represents one of the columns of the data set that we selected earlier. We should be somewhat familiar with these names by now, right? And in the bottom part here, this is where we're going to be dragging the different variables that we need into these different selections where we build the rows, columns, values, and filters of the cross tab or pivot table that we want to build. Since we already laid out our rough game plan, what we're going to do here is we're going to grab the tourism tasting variable and place it in our columns of our pivot table. We'll grab the beer pref hoppy and grab it into the rows. And then we'll simply include the count of beer pref hoppy as the actual value. So this will give us the raw count of observations that we see. Let's drop into Excel and now execute all of these game plan steps. Now that I have my pivot table set up in a new sheet here, this is where it'll be dynamically created as I adjust the settings. The pivot table fields menu here is where I see my variables that I can pick from and where I drag them into the proper spots to build my table. If you don't see this menu, it's probably because the field list icon's not showing. There's a few other ways it might be hiding, but it'll definitely be available to you. Just nose around if it's not showing up in your version of Excel. I grab my tasting variable and drag it in here. I grab my beer pref hoppy variable, drag it into my rows, and I drag that same variable again into my values. And by default, it'll just do a simple count. So each one of these counted values here represents one of the 233, oh, I'm sorry, 230 respondents. Let's talk a little bit about where this table is starting at, and then we will clean this thing up in a little bit. Okay, we have successfully created our basic pivot table. We have our two different variables representing the columns and rows of our data set, and the count of our observations, 230 in total, are represented inside the cells. While this is a great starting point, it really doesn't help us investigate our research question in the most ideal way. So we're going to do a little bit of cleaning up here to get this thing ready for real meaningful analysis. First, we're going to want to exclude the negative 999 column. These were the people who didn't answer the question uh, related to uh, a beer tasting. Next, we're going to need to reorganize those rows. Uh, by default, the pivot table organized these in alphabetical order, but that doesn't make a lot of sense for us. We have agree, then disagree, then I don't know. That's a little confusing, so we're going to have to rearrange that. And lastly, we don't want to actually report the count of observations. Remember, our question is about whether or not people who have been to a tasting room tend to prefer more hoppy beer. So it's not really an issue of raw counts of observations, but instead relative propensity. What's going to be most appropriate for us here is to report these values as a column percentage. So each one of these columns will have a grand total of 100%, and each one of the values in each one of the columns will represent will represent the percentage of individuals who agree or disagree to the happiness question based on their attendance or non-attendance of a tasting room. Now our game plan for setting these things up, we will be, we're going to use the column label filter available in the pivot table. Then we're going to manually rearrange these uh, headers for the row labels and organize them. And finally, we're going to change how we show our values so that we have a percent column total. Let's depict this all in Excel in the next part of the video. Okay, so I want to get rid of the people who didn't respond to the uh, tasting room question. So I click here in column labels and I can deselect that option. Nice. Next, I have to manually rearrange these strange uh, alphabetical arrangement here. This is a little tricky to do. It's very sensitive that you have it hovering in exactly the right spot. So this will be a little touch and go if you're new to it. How it works is you click on one and hover just so that the crosshair changes and then you can drag and rearrange it that way. 
Notice, notice how my crosshairs change right there. And there we go, a much more coherent organization. Lastly, I want to report column percentages of these values so I can better and more clearly investigate my research question. So if I just right click anywhere inside of this menu, and there's a few other ways to get to the same menu here, but I like the right click option. I can just go to show values as, and I can say, please show that as the percent of the column total. And you can see there's a bunch of other options as well. And there we go. It's a much better improvement. Now let's talk through how to interpret these results. And then we'll talk a little bit more about maybe how to clean this up. Oh yes, this is much better. Let's take a look at our question again. I wonder if people who have been to a craft beer tasting room are more prone to prefer really hoppy beers. The answer is definitively yes. In fact, they are more than twice as likely as people who have not visited a tasting room. Notice how the people who agree or strongly agree with hoppy beer preference are approximately about 44% of the people who have, have attended a tasting room, whereas it's 15 and 22% for the groups who haven't done it and would like to do it or haven't done it and are not interested in going to a tasting room. So definitely very clear results here. Now as a final step, I might clean up this table a little bit more and do some manual adjusting. Notice that I bolded the agree and strongly agree sections and I highlighted the I have done this group in green because that's really sort of the core crux of my question. I'm trying to draw my viewer into the fundamental question I was trying to investigate, right? Help them out a little bit. Now, if I was going to include this final table in a written report, are there any other additional modifications or edits you would do to sort of clean this up and have it ready to go?